Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, my name is Chris Gilmore and today I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, new Netduino boards, um, a project that I've recently done with them. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with the Netduino boards, uh, it's basically an open source electronics platform uh, that you could program using the .NET micro framework. So everyone that uh, is uh, those Windows programmers, .NET uh, developers, is something that's really awesome and um, you can make some really cool things uh, you know, interfacing hardware and software together and just programming in, in .NET, um, C Sharp, VB, um, without having to program assembly or anything really low level. So um, today I'm going to be showing you the Netduino Plus, which is a newer board. Uh, it's actually out of stock right now after their initial run of, uh, of sales. So people are buying these things up, so check them out. So this is the Netduino Plus board. It's a slight variation of the regular Netduino board. A little bit pricier, but some of the things you get is the um, Ethernet, onboard Ethernet, as well as onboard SD card reader, um, which is really cool um, for creating any type of application where you need to do a lot of data storage or um, interface with, with um, network devices. Um, so really, really cool. Not that much more pricey than the Netduino. So this board costs about $50. Um, so, good deal. Anyways, both boards come with uh, 20 general purpose input output um, digital or analog ports, um, which is really cool to hook up all your sensors, and then four um, analog inputs um, to hook up, you know, any, any other type of device. And then you have uh, your power, so you can put 5 volts or 3.3 volts out. Um, and then the, the board itself is powered. You can either hook up a 9-volt battery or you can power it directly through USB, which I'm doing right now, hooked into my computer. The other cool thing is you can program it through the USB, um, which is great because you could just do all your development in Visual Studio 2010 right in the .NET Micro Framework and then uh, just write your programs directly. Um, so very easy to, to develop for and to debug as well. Um, we're doing all the development, like I said, in Visual Studio 2010, um, C Sharp. You can do inline debugging, which is really cool. You could set up breakpoints um, and put watch windows, stuff like that. So really easy to debug your, your, your software um, while interfacing with hardware at the same time. So really cool. So I, like probably a lot of you guys, uh, live in an apartment um, where we have one of these boxes. Um, that's used to buzz people in when they ring the bell. So someone rings the bell, and if I want to open the door from up inside my apartment, I just click that button, and then it buzzes the door so that someone can go inside. Um, so for the first thing I wanted to do with the Netduino Plus was hook it up to this this uh, box so that I can actually, you know, connect this device to the to a web facing um, application, which would allow me to buzz people in from the web. Um, so I can do it from my phone, I can do it from my computer, I don't need to be at this box. Uh, so I thought it was a kind of a cool project to do um, as start, sort of a tutorial for the Netduino. Um, so anyways, I took all these control wires, um, I opened up this box, did a few uh, readings on some of the different wires and found out which ones were used for what, and then I ran these up to the board. So as you can see, these wires come all the way up to my room and go into this um, educational board that I'm using. I'm not using any of the components on the sides. Um, it's really just, I'm really just using it for this, uh, for this breadboard right here, um, for all my electronics. So it started off with me just being able to buzz the door, which means me hooking up um, a GPIO pin as an output to basically open or close a relay um, that would, you know, cause these, the, the door to buzz um, from these um, wires coming from the box itself. So it's either, it's really just turning on and off a switch. Um, but then I kind of expanded it to do a bunch of other things, um, one of which read when someone actually rings the bell so I can determine when someone's trying to get into the apartment. Um, so I have another relay for that that's hooked up to when someone rings the bell. So this one's for when someone rings the bell, this one's for when, the, um, when we want to buzz someone in, and then I have a bunch of different other LEDs hooked up here um, as status indicators as what's going on. Because remember, this is going to be hooked up to the web, so the Netduino right now is running a, a web server and um, actually more like a web service and um, this LED is denoting you know that it's in standby mode it's waiting to accept uh, requests and then when we buzz someone in uh, the green LED will light up and when someone rings the bell the red LED will light up so kind of just a visual indicator good for debugging when when someone's ringing um, the doorbell and when we're buzzing someone in to see what's going on um, there's a bunch of other little things in here 
um, cause I had to deal with some AC voltages coming in from the, um, door buzzer. So that was the really tricky part. I, you know, have a little bit, uh, a little, uh, full wave rectifier right here, um, converting it to DC and then, um, um, bringing the voltage down to something that that's usable for the Netduino board. Um, so a little bit of electronics. I've got some NPN um, bipolar junction transistors um, hooked up to uh, drive these LEDs. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's about it. It's a pretty simple circuit. All right, so let's see this board in action. The first thing I wanted to show you is the phase one uh, functionality, which is, like I said, um, be able to buzz someone into the apartment through the web. So we have this iPhone here um, that's not hooked up to Wi-Fi. It's just purely uh, three off the three AT&T 3G network. Um, so I have uh, an application here that brings me to my the website. And as you can see, it might be a little fuzzy, um, but it's the website for the Netduino. Um, it's not going directly to the uh, the board, but it's going to my computer that's running uh, a web application, and then my web application um, connects to the board itself. Um, so it's just a little bit easier to log data because then I can log it in SQL um, from my computer, and then I just communicate um, to the board and tell it what to do through my through my computer. So, anyways. Um, as you can see, I can have this big button right here that says buzz door, and then I have a long listing of all of the history of events that have occurred on the Netduino. So let's hit this button here, and it's going to send the request to the Netduino, and you'll see the green LED indicator goes high, and the door is buzzed. Um, so someone could have came into the apartment while that was buzzing. So the next thing I wanted to show um, for phase two was me actually connecting the um, doorbell to this, uh, to the Netduino, so that when someone rings the bell, I can get, uh, say, like a text notification on my phone um, that someone rang the bell. So um, I connected that and then had the Netduino send a um, web service request to my the web application running on my computer, um, which would then in turn email um, my phone, turning into a text message along the way. So. Um, I'm going to just trip this, these, these wires right here, which will simulate the door being um, rung. And so instead of being downstairs, I can just do it from up here to simulate what's going on. So as you can see, when I connect it, um, the red LED indicator goes high. And then hopefully in a few seconds, the phone will get a text message. So um, while we're waiting for that to come in, again, um, the board itself can actually send the email. I did that. Um, originally, oh, there's the text message, uh, doorbell rang. Um, so I did that originally, but uh, then I just configured it to send a web service request to my computer to, that would then send the, uh, send the email. You can do a little bit more that way. Um, SSL you can't do on the Netduino just yet. Um, so you can do SSL on, on your computer, obviously, so just have your, your web application communicate uh, directly with this board via SOAP requests or, or um, <clears throat> any type of HTTP request. So that was phase two. So the last thing I wanted to do as part of phase three would be make it so that if someone rings the bell in a certain combination, it'll automatically buzz the door. Um, so like I said before, I can trip the, the doorbell with these two wires right here. So if I ring the bell normally, as you can see, nothing happens. Um, but if I ring it in a certain combination, the door should buzz in. So let's see if I can ring it in the right combination with my fingers here. And as you can see, the door buzzed automatically. So um, those are the three things I've done so far with the Netduino, but I'd um, probably going to hook up some more things, maybe get some live sound or video coming from the door. Um, so that if it rings, someone can talk to the person through the web, um, see if it's someone they know, and let them in remotely. Um, but until then, um, I would check out the Netduino board, and if you guys are into um, .NET development, or really just any type of high-level programming, it's something really, it, it makes it easy for um, people that are software developers and not quite um, engineers to interface uh, simple hardware, simple switches with, with software. So this is what it looks like from the software end of things. Like I said before, we're programming in Visual Studio 2010. So for those of you who are familiar with the environment, it'll be really simple for you to pick up. 
Um, there's an SDK that comes along with the Netduino, um, which allows you to um, write much higher level code and not have to worry about all the details. So for example, in this class program, it's really easy to declare output ports, um, input ports, things of that nature to interface the hardware right with the software, setting up um, initial state, whether you want it to be high or low, and which pin you're dealing with. Um, so again, real easy, real easy to program. IntelliSense is in integrated and in everything, so real easy. Um, and then you can use other classes uh, that come embed with the .NET Micro Framework, such as a socket class. So it's easy to set up a socket. Um, in our case, doing a um, a web server. Um, we have a listener class right here that um, sets up the ports to listen um, and then a request class that deals with when we request come in, decoding them and also sending responses. Um, so really simple from this side of things uh, I can show you um, one of the ports I set up as an interrupt port um, which is when someone rings the doorbell. Um, so this is really an input port um, but I, I I can declare it as um, firing a function, um, this method right here, when it switches, when it goes between high and low. And that's denoted by I want the interrupt to be called on both edges, high and low. So um, when someone rings the doorbell, it runs this function right here. And it passes in what values it's getting from the port. So I can determine um, if someone's ringing the, del the, the doorbell, if they're holding it down, this will be true. Uh, or I'm sorry, data 2 will be 0, um, which will actually be low, and if it's high, then someone's releasing the button. Um, so I program all this uh, logic that goes along with it um, that deals with um, time delays, and you know this is for the, the sequence that I want. Um, if, if, them, if, if they ring the bell in a certain combination, I can um, call this buzz door uh, function to buzz the door. Otherwise, it won't get called, and the door will just ring normally. So from the other side of things, I have this .NET application, web application that communicates directly with the board. Um, so I have a bunch of um, web methods here, web services, that are invoked from the board itself when something occurs. So I have these two web methods, one called log door event, the other one called send text message. So when something happens on the board, it'll invoke this web, web method and um, the event will get logged to a SQL database and I do that from again my computer. Um, same thing with sending a text message is all done from my computer so essentially the board will capture you know the buzzing and the ringing of the doorbells it'll send this information to my computer and then my computer decides okay do I need to log this to a SQL database do I need to send a text message um, so we can see if we switch back to the um, Netduino this bottom function right here log door event gets called and what it's going to do is it's going to create a new socket and um, assemble the packet to send, um, which invokes the web service. And then it just waits for the response. <coughs> so, so, real easy to program if you're familiar with Microsoft Visual Studio. Um, it's, it's very simple and uh, really easy to pick up. So if you uh, are looking for some code examples or some you know, more elaboration on, on this code, um, just send me an email and uh, we, can, we can discuss um, some of the cool things you can do. Thanks for listening.